Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Miltra. In this relaunch of the former RPG Monk Reviews, now simply rechristened as Gaming Monk Reviews, I'll be opening up to the possibility of requests and donations, though this is still a work in progress. While the purpose of the reviews is still to showcase things outside the norm, I have my limits on what I'm able or willing to delve into. This list is intended to cover a base of what I'm not touching. But first, a few clarifications, for lack of a better word. First, some of these picks will contradict with earlier reviews I've done. This list takes priority over that. Down the line, there is a chance I might break this rule, but it'll be done by my choice, and I'll usually have a specific reason why. Second, just because it's not getting a review does not mean I'm unwilling to do a video on it. Non-review videos will be on a specific angle, but won't be completely off the table. And third, the numbering is completely arbitrary here. With that said, let's begin with the top nine games I'm not going to review. Number nine, Adventures and Singular Expansions. This one's low on the list because I'm on the fence about its inclusion as a whole. Given that the goal of these reviews is to show a wide variety of different games that have flown under the radar, I don't want to focus too much on expansions to games, especially if it's ones I haven't covered. For one, I don't want them to overflow this channel, and for another, 99% of the time there's not a whole lot to say about them. I'm not against the idea of doing a companion video based on an expansion or adventure, but not a full review. That said, any scores I give towards expansions will be based both on the quality of the book itself, and whether or not I'd recommend its purchase to those who already have the core book. Either way, this is one of the entries on the list that I'm very 50-50 on about if I'm going to stick to it or not. We'll see. Number 8, Diceless RPGs. This is one that I'm probably going to stick really hard on, but I have no intention of reviewing games that don't have some sort of die or randomizer mechanic. The primary reason comes down to experience. Diceless games are a style of play that I don't have the level of familiarity with that I do other games. It'd be like trying to open a box while wearing oven mitts. Maybe when I've done a decent amount of research, I'll consider it, but right now there is not enough game for me to work with in it. Number 7, Retro Clones. This mostly pertains to D&D retro clones, such as Lamentations of the Flame Princess, Osric, Dungeon Crawl Classics, and Castles and Crusades. Now, I've spoken in my piece numerous times on the issue that I have with the old-school Renaissance as a concept, and with a lot of these games, I'd ultimately end up repeating myself because they're all trying to do the same thing. That said, games that try for old school without slavishly replicating the mechanics, i.e. neo-clones, are still open for review. Number six, universal-style RPGs. This applies primarily to games like Hero, GURPS, Savage World, Fate, and a few others. Universal-style games offer a lot of possibilities in what they can do, and they tend to suffer the same flaws as well. Because most of these games are built on similar structures to each other, reviewing any of them would be an effort in repetition. However, games that are universal with a specific genre, for lack of a better term, are off the hook when it comes to this. I don't like being the seen-it-all guy, but with many games in this genre, I'm kind of forced to. The sole exception to this rule is any sort of universal game that offers a unique mechanic. A couple examples I can think of that I'd like to do are both from West End Games, namely Masterbook and D6. But as they say, that is drama for another day. Number five, any game from Palladium. Be it Robotech, Rifts, Heroes Unlimited, or Palladium Fantasy. Point is, for most of my time with RPGs, Palladium has been the whipping boy of the hobby, and for good reason. Lateness, bizarre editing, things being where they shouldn't be, complete misunderstanding of game balance, the list goes on and on. Robotech might be the most tolerable of the bunch, I will admit, but thinking about the Palladium system for the purposes of review gives me a headache. So for the sake of what little sanity I have, I've got to put my foot down. Palladium is off the list. Number four, older editions of RPGs. I hate edition wars. I'm just going to be flat out and say I hate edition wars. With the exception of the parody card game, that game was hilarious. They're essentially a pissing contest to me, about as petty as arguing which iteration of Final Fantasy is the best, and I've got enough of that shit to go for days. As such, I have no desire in using them in a game of old bearing the new that so many have done in the past. That's not to say a newer edition is always better, mind you, but if I'm going to review something, it'll be the version of the game you're most likely to see on a given shelf. Plus, it makes things a little more consistent on my end. In that same vein, I have no desire to do a edition versus edition comparison. If I think a current edition is inferior, 
I'll say so in the proper review and lay out why I think so. Number three, World of Darkness, both old and new, as well as the Monty Cook version. Obviously, there are other games like Traveler and Rollmaster that'll fit under this, but World of Darkness is the big one for me. There's a lot, and I mean a lot, of ground to cover. Much like miniatures games, which I'll get to in a minute, a big issue is cost, but there's also the fact that World of Darkness goes into so many directions and styles that reviewing just one of them is a challenge in and of itself. Furthermore, World of Darkness is such a cornerstone in the hobby's history that a review is ultimately redundant for my style. My energy is better spent on the works that follow its legacy, not the stuff everyone knows about. With that said, I will freely admit that games that use the storyteller system, but not necessarily be World of Darkness games, are still on the table. Like, I really want to do a review of the Scion trilogy, as well as stuff like Trinity, but World of Darkness itself is off the table. Not until I can get a full team to co-write a lot of the stuff and take off the workload. And since my cloning machine is still confiscated, that is not in the cards. Number two, Pathfinder slash Dungeons and Dragons, any edition. Yes, I technically broke this one by reviewing 5th edition last year. In my defense, I had a very specific reason for reviewing it, laying to rest all the issues I was seeing since the next playtest, and I'm probably going to revisit 5th edition sometime down the line because I think there's still stuff I hadn't covered. That said, the reason I had for opting out of the world's most popular role-playing game remained the same. My purpose with these reviews and with this channel is to show what else is out there, and reviewing either one would just be going along with the crowd. The sole exceptions to this rule would be games that are D&D in all but name, or use the mechanics in new ways. A few good examples of this are Legend, 13th Age, and Fantasy Craft. But like I said at the start, just because a review is off the table doesn't mean I won't make a video on it. I've just got to tackle it at a specific angle. Number one, miniatures games. This applies to the majority of minis games, but in particular the heavy hitters from Games Workshop and Privateer Press. To do a review of one of their flagship games, I'd need to research a bunch of different army books, sometimes across multiple iterations, as well as look into the different factions and how they balance with each other. A big issue is budget but it'd be impossible to review these games as a whole because they continuously change and refine themselves for better or worse. I don't have any confidence that I could do that to the standard I hold myself to. And in the case of Games Workshop, they've done some things that, to say the least, frustrate me. There's still some stuff I want to talk about in Miniatures Games to be sure, but I'm not doing a full review. And that's the list of the top nine that I'm not going to review. Now, there's still plenty of others that I still want to review. And if you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below, or shoot me a line or two on my personal blog, The Monastery. The links will be below in the description. With that said, as I mentioned in the comeback video, there's a whole lot out there and it's time to get to work. So until next time, my name is Mildra, I'm your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!